Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode I get to change gears for a moment, switch away from the traditional design products that I show like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, so forth and so on. And although my passion is with photography, my second passion is with video. So with that, I'm going to show you my top five favorite things in the brand new Production Premium CS5. The bulk of them are in Premiere Pro, but I have one special one at the end for After Effects. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. Here I am in Premiere Pro CS5, and again, the interface is pretty much the same as CS4 and CS3, but there are a couple new twists. Well, let's go to the Media Browser. In the Media Browser, I can go ahead and preview things on my hard drive, memory cards, pretty much anything I can stick inside my Mac or PC. So in this case, I've got some footage here that was captured from my DSLR still camera that captures video. I have a, a, a Nikon D5000, and I shot these shots when I was in London. So let's just go ahead and double click on one to make sure we've got the right one. And of course, we can preview it right here in the browser very fluidly. And of course, this is pretty cool because even though this is not my top five favorite things, one of them happens to be, even though it's not a top five, 64-bit. So we're taking advantage of all my memory. I have eight gigs of RAM in this laptop. And now Premiere and After Effects and Media Encoder can see all of it instead of just three or four gigs. Okay, so with that, um, now let's go ahead and take a look at that first thing that is my top five. So I'm going to drag this into a bin, and then we'll go ahead and twirl that bin down so we can see the clip. So we've got these cool presets now inside of um, Premiere Pro. So if I wanted to create a new sequence, we've even got presets for a DSLR camera. So whether my camera shoots 720p, 480p, or 1080p, I can go and find the preset that I need. But here's the problem. I have to know what preset I need. I have to know what my camera does. Does it do 720 at 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, so forth and so on. So my first favorite thing is I don't have to know that anymore. I'll just cancel out of that and drag this clip right onto the new sequence window or new sequence button, and it will generate a new sequence that is the exact setting that I need and drop the clip on it. So here it is. I'm on that new sequence. I can play it back even in real time as HD video right here in Premiere Pro. So that is my first favorite thing. Now, let's take a look at my next thing. I've got this timeline here. Let's go ahead and uh, scroll down because there's some other footage that was captured by a friend of mine. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab something from my tapeless formats here. I've got a Canon folder. I'm a Nikon guy, but my friends shoot with Canon. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag this Canon clip right onto the same timeline. So I can go ahead and, of course, expand that out so we can magnify it a little bit more. And here's the clip that I just put in. But my friend shoots with a Canon that shoots at 1080p. I'm at 720p. So let's go ahead and scale that to the frame size that I need for both videos. So now we'll go back to a little bit for my footage. We'll hit play. And it'll just go ahead and go right to his footage. So there we are looking at mixed formats on the timeline, playing them fluently right here inside Premiere Pro CS5. So that is my second favorite thing, mixing formats, not having to worry about anything, just dropping them in and editing. And of course, even editing right off the card as I've demonstrated in the past with CS4. All right, next one, and this is probably going to be, if not, it's my third right now, but it's probably going to quickly grow to be my first favorite thing, and that is taking advantage of the new Mercury playback engine. So let's go ahead and go to a, a sequence here where I've got five layers of video. Four of them are HD, so we'll go ahead and uh, just click in here, and we'll just uh, uh, zoom this window up, and we'll do something we've never, able, never been able to do before. Let's go back in time here, and we'll just hit the space bar and play. That's right, we're playing four layers of HD video on a laptop with the software Mercury Playback Engine. This is pretty amazing. I mean, it's just phenomenal, the performance we get now. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, of course, that was, that was four layers of video. What about seven? That's right. I am going to go in and attempt to do something never done before, and that is playback. Seven layers of HD video, complete with the top layer being a, a key of a green screen. So here I am hitting the space bar, playing back seven layers of HD video quickly and easily inside the new Premiere Pro CS5 on a laptop. Now, that's the software Mercury playback engine. If you've got the appropriate 
NVIDIA card in your desktop, you can even do more. You could do those seven layers of video with special effects on all seven layers and get back the same kind of performance. All right, so here's my uh, fourth favorite thing. Let's go ahead and scroll down a bit. Let's open up this sequence where we've got a green screen shot. And my fourth favorite thing is the ability to go into my effects panel and we'll just do a search for Ultra and we'll drag over the new Ultra Kia Keyer for Premiere Pro. We'll just drop that right on a clip and we'll now go to our effect controls and we'll just go ahead and twirl that down. We can now just grab an eyedropper and key out the green in that green screen, including cleaning up the mat if the lighting wasn't perfect. So I can adjust the tolerance and get that just right to now, for the first time, have a professional green screen keyer right here in Premiere without having to go to After Effects to do it. And we got a little shadows there. We can go ahead and turn that just a bit, tweak it a little bit more. But you get the idea. I can keep tweaking this until I get it just right. And again, this wasn't lit perfectly but I'm able to get in a really, really good key, even on DV footage, even though this is HD, inside Premiere Pro now without having to go to After Effects. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead, and speaking of After Effects, we'll pop over to After Effects to take a look at the fifth thing. And here we are in Adobe After Effects CS5, which by the way, gets the same 64-bit goodness. So no longer am I limited to three gigabytes of RAM if my machine had eight, 12, or 16. After Effects now will do longer RAM previews and take advantage of your RAM. But that's not the fifth thing. The fifth thing is actually extremely cool. It's the Roto Brush. Now, what is Roto Brush for? Roto Brush is rotoscoping inside of After Effects. The ability to remove a subject from the background, but of course, Unlike Photoshop, where it's one frame, one still image, this is 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second. So the ability to take all of those frames automatically onto their own layer. So think of it as the extract or the new refine edge, but for motion, for video, for After Effects. So here we are. We're in After Effects, and I'm going to go ahead and just double click on this scene to take it into the... Um, to, the, to, to expose this layer. Now we'll go ahead and we'll grab the new Roto Brush. Now, do I have to grab a Wacom pen and outline him? No, it auto detects. So all I have to do is just kind of give it an idea of what part of the subject of the video I want. And then After Effects will figure out the outline. Now, of course, it's not perfect in this case. No problem. I just go ahead and add in the edges that it did not get the first time. So again, without me having to go along every single edge to do this, I can just quickly do it with the roto brush. And if I held, if it grabbed too much, I just hold down my Option or Alt key to tell it the areas that I didn't want, and it would then go ahead and subtract those areas out. Now that's one frame outline. I don't want to have to do these 24 frames per second. Again, hours, days, weeks of work. So now I'll just hit the space bar. And After Effects will auto-detect every frame. And even where it's introducing a new part of his collar, it will go ahead and figure that out and start to bring it in. This is simply amazing. It's going to change everything. Imagine your, your workday being cut down from hours to minutes. And of course, if it didn't grab a frame just right, I can still go in and tweak it on that individual frame if I need to. Now, just like the Refine Edge has, detects good or hard versus soft, I also have a Refine Matte control. So, for example, we go into the actual uh, mask here. We can say Refine Matte, and that will auto-detect the soft versus hard edges. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, what would I do with such a tool? Well, let's go ahead and go back to the project here, where I've got a finished version of the rotoscope. And here we are with the video that we were just looking at. But the difference is we extracted him out from this layer so that we can turn the original layer darker so he stands out more. But more importantly, I thought I'd have a little fun. Let's go ahead and turn that layer off where I've composited him on the CS5 background. So those are the possibilities, being able to now put your subjects in any area you want. Put another video behind them. Put stills behind them. Run a slideshow behind them. So just amazing work that we can now do without having to shoot green screen first. So whether you're in Premiere and you're using a new Ultra Keyer, whether you're in After Effects and you're using a new Roto Brush, it's only limited now by your creativity. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.